So I've been helping people with disabilities pursue employment for 20 years, and um, I've come to understand a few basic or universal truths about employment that I would want to share with you, and I, I think that you'll agree with them. So first and foremost, employment is an expectation in our society, right? We start, you know, talking to our children in toddlerhood about what they want to do when they grow up, and we ask them over and over and over and over again. As parents, do we ever think that it's okay that our, you know, children would grow up, leave the house, and then not work? Is that a future that we see for them? No, we, we want them to work because we know that work is part of what defines us and gives us meaning. When we first meet people, it's one of the, the things that we ask them. What do you do for a living? People see, seek out jobs based on their interests and skills. So we naturally do that. Okay? We naturally gravitate towards things that we are interested in and what we're good at. Imagine if we were forced to um, do something that we weren't interested in and that we didn't feel like we could complete well, you know, t job tasks that we couldn't feel like we would do well. I think back to session two and when Cindy was telling us about, you know, the balance between important two and four and how she would you know, probably go about punching people, right? <laughs> if she was forced to do things that, you know, that weren't meaningful. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, so you could imagine that if somebody, if we didn't do a good job helping someone match their interests and skills to employment and go through a natural process for them, a process of elimination sometimes, right? Um, to get there that there might be some acting out, there might be some not wanting to work, some deciding not to go in that day or quitting a job after three months, right? Because that's probably what we would do if we were made to go into a job every day, right? All of us would do that, that we didn't want, you know. As I said earlier, most jobs are found through family and friend connections. I say this in almost every training or presentation I give that do you know that less than 20% of all jobs are ever advertised? Are you aware of that? So m most jobs are in what's called the hidden job market. They never see a help wanted sign or a paper advertisement or an internet posting. Okay. Most jobs are, um, you know, employers know they need help and they will work through their current employees to find help, or they rely on people coming in and being curious about them and seeking them out. How many of you in the room, for instance, have filled out a job application after you got hired? Everyone customizes their work. So we, we instinctively do this. We'll get on a job, Okay, we don't know all the things that we need to know the first day we start a job. And we start doing, excelling at the things that we're really good at. And, and we kind of naturally figure out how to not do the things that we're not so good at. And our bosses realize what we're good at and, and assign us or reassign us based on what we're good at. Okay, so we naturally customize our work to fit ourselves. The job descriptions that we start with aren't always what we have years, you know, into the job, right? And I bring this up because there is an effective way of seeking employment for people with disabilities that's called customized employment, okay, which, which means that you engage in a negotiation with the employer on the front end to do that customization rather than once someone gets into the job. People change jobs and build careers over their lifetime. So gone are the days of 25-year positions, <laughs> right? This is, this is just our workplaces become so dynamic. Some employers actually expect employees to move on and try different things. It's okay to quit jobs. Think back to your, your teenagerhood or your early 20s. How many of you had more than, say, five or six jobs between the age of 15 and 25? I think when I was in high school, I got a new job every year just because I wanted to try different things, right? I didn't want to press men's shirts at Quinky Cleaners for too long. And skills learned in sheltered employment settings do not transfer into the community. There is 
clear and irrefutable evidence or research that proves this. That just because we teach some, someone something in a work center doesn't mean that that transfers into a workplace in the community. But unfortunately, the focus in our field when working with people with disabilities, and you know, this spills over into how families, you know, raise their youth with you know their sons and daughters with disabilities. Okay, that has these things haven't been the focus. We've lost sight of these truths. We've kind of thrown them out the window when it comes to helping people with disabilities into jobs. Instead, we've focused on assessments and work readiness. I've known people to have assessment after assessment after assessment. And it hasn't been until we've decided to throw those assessments out the window and take a different approach, a more natural approach to employment, that the person you know, got their very first job in 10 years after being labeled unemployable. Okay. We tend to pinpoint deficits in people. The, the positive and negative descriptions from last time, remember? How many of you as teachers or service professionals in this room have, have created a description like the first one, the more negative one? And, and then on the parent side of things, almost every parent session when I go around the room and I ask people to introduce themselves and say a little bit about their son or daughter, the first or second thing that they say about their son or daughter is their disability label. Okay, so we tend to focus on those deficits. We also tend to focus on paid services and supports. So if we know that a lot of jobs are found through our network, why are we hiring job developers that don't talk to families to go out and develop jobs? You know, and we all rely on coworkers. So why are we sometimes um, having job coaches work with people one to one and get in the way of those natural supports? Okay. So we we can take the focus off those paid services and those paid supports. Not that they're not necessary. In many cases they are. But they don't have to be the focus. Scarcity of funding. So going back to that idea that, well, we don't have service options, so we can't um, pursue employment. Okay. Rather than focusing on the abundance that's in our community first, and then seeing how services can support um, you know, the process, rather than having the services first that then help us tap into community. It should really be the other way around. And then another focus that we've had, the misguided focus, has been on advertised jobs and big corporations. Okay, going into um, the, the 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 big businesses of the world that have the the HR departments as gatekeepers and the job descriptions and protocols that are written in stone like the Ten Commandments, and we keep going there and banging our heads and banging our heads and banging our heads. Where, and I'm not saying that there aren't strategies to to get into those places, there are. But most jobs in America are in small businesses, in businesses without signs. How do we change it? So I would say that it's real simple, and maybe I'm Pollyanna-ish, okay? But I always, always, always come back to self-determination, and I reflect on what that means in my own life. It's something that we all share. We all want choice and control over what happens in our life, you know, at any age, we want choice and control. Okay? We all want to have meaningful relationships. We all need to have experiences in order to make informed choices. We need that. So being in a self-contained classroom, you know, or a day center where you're, you go do the same thing every day, every day, every day, and around the same people, that's not really cultivating self-determination. Remember that in order to help you figure out their employment futures, we need to engage them in experiences. Sometimes that seems risky, but the only way they will learn about themselves and we will learn about them is through engaging them in those experiences. 
let's think about how we go about, you know, thinking about experience, okay? Think, let's take a step back and think about our own career exploration and how we got where we are today. And maybe some of you are still exploring your careers, <laughs> right? I do think it's a perpetual cycle, you know. Um, so we start with our interests, okay? And so as you think about this for yourself, think about how it might translate into working with um, your students or, you know, ta having conversations and supporting your family member, okay? So we start with our interests. You know, we could say we like cars or we like dogs or we like babies or, you know, whatever it is, we could take an interest inventory and just start throwing out some things. And so for me, when I was... Um, Young, I liked retail. You know, what I mean, I wanted to work at a clothing shop <laughs> or something like that. You know, and I ended up in a jewelry store. You know, a jewelry department in a big, big store. But anyways, so I mean, think about how you first, you know, gravitated towards your first job and whatnot. So, and in every job after that, it's based on your interests. Okay, and then we have people in our life, life or we have experiences, we have friends, family members, teachers that help us understand what our personal attributes are, what we bring to the workplace. So we, you know, and sometimes those are imposed upon us by family members, like you're hardworking, <laughs> right? Or you're punctual, or you're, you have a good sense of humor, or you're very social. So there's these personal attributes that kind of define us, and we bring those to the workplaces that we, you know, or the places that we go and eventual workplaces, and some attributes are more welcome than others in, in certain workplaces, right? And then we all have our ideal conditions for employment. We, you know, there are certain times of the day or um, certain kinds of environments or things that have to be in place in order to make us happy, well-motivated people. And then lastly, we take our skills. And I, this is, last kind of on this personal side of the cycle for me because we learn skills constantly. So, and none of us ever have all the skills that we need when we start a job. So I honestly, it's like down the list in consideration for me. But it, 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 how many of you have kind of thought about that first? Like when, with your sons and daughters or your students or the people you're working with? about, okay, well, until they master this skill, then we can't move on to really doing those interest inventories or doing some exploration. So then, so we have this kind of personal definition of ourselves, okay, as we, uh, it is a good idea to have a, li a little understanding about who we are before we start to take that out into a career, you know, into the workplace, into exploring careers. And so, and so we, you know, once we get a job or we're job shadowing or we're, you know, doing an internship somewhere or, you know, having an employment-related experience, we start to learn work tasks, okay? That is pretty much the first thing you start doing when you, when you have these experiences. Then you get kind of acclimated to the work environment, okay? And then you start understanding the work culture. You start meeting people, okay? And those things may or may not go well, <laughs> right? Some things maybe go better than others. Sometimes we leave places because of the work culture. It's not because of the skills. And sometimes we move on because we don't necessarily like the work environment. It wasn't that the culture was, you know, but it was outside and it was hot and we just, you know, we liked hanging with the people and it was good teamwork but couldn't, couldn't work outside on the lawn crew anymore. I did that. <laughs> I've had a lot of jobs. So, um, you know, so, so we... We learn from those experiences, and then it shapes our interests again, and it shapes who we are. And from those experiences, we maybe have developed some other personal attributes that then, you know, continue on and continue on.